we've always built our, built our business over how can we build as many long-term customers as possible and continue to build on that. This is Velocitize Talks and I'm Lauren Cox. Uh, today we have Theo Kananopoulos, CEO of Out in the Clouds. Welcome, Theo. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So I'd love to um, for you to tell me a little bit about Out in the Clouds and um, what you do and then some of your work with uh, Salesforce. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we've been, uh, I'm one of the co-founders there. We've been around for about seven years now. Uh, five of those years, we've been a Salesforce partner. Um, and pretty much the entire time, we've been building websites as well. And for a long time, we've been a partner of, of WP Engines too. Yeah. Um, with Salesforce, we build you know, most of what the platform offers, we sort of help our clients with customizing um, their Salesforce instance to allow them to gain whatever efficiencies they're trying to get within their business by, by leveraging the power of the platform. So Theo, what would you say different, differentiates out in the clouds to your competitors? Um, look, we don't spend a lot of time focusing on competitors. We really focus on how we can deliver services better. But one thing that we've been told is we sort of look at the digital ecosystem holistically. So websites, um, CRM, marketing content and strategy and how all of that can come together yeah. to you know, deliver more seamless customer um, experiences or um, more, more efficiencies, like I said before. So I think yeah. sort of bringing all of that into, into one place and sort of delivering from a central, um, central business, I think is what we've been told is one of our key differentiators. Yeah, awesome. So people have um, talked about the... In, in in years to come, the website will uh, be abolished. Mm. Uh, can you tell me what you think about that and how websites can stay relevant? Yeah, I don't I don't know about abolish. I think you know, like newspapers are still being printed, right? Um, I'm not sure if encyclopedias are still being printed, but Bibles are still being printed. So um, I think that people are too much look at look at things too binary. There's always room for and, yeah. you know, so I think the website will evolve into something that fits what the, what the future will, will need from it, right? We're going to mm-hmm. start to see what well, we've already started to see, augmented reality. I think we're still a while away from VR, but um, I think the, you know, the digital shop front or the digital footprint or presence mm-hmm. that a website provides, it's going to continue to need to be there for I think at least for at least my lifetime, right? I think that there's there's absolutely a genuine need for it. Yeah. It's just what it looks like is going to be super interesting. And I'm definitely not a fortune teller, so I, yeah. I couldn't say, but I, I, I like the idea of, um, you know, sort of utilizing the website as sort of your central, your central point, like it sort of, it is currently, yeah. but being able to give customers even more ability to, engage closer with the customer with sorry with your business or um you know have a place to sort of log in and and sort of make themselves at home within you know building whether it's building a community or having you know stronger loyalty programs or different benefits of um being a customer it still centers around having that website as a as a central place yeah. and then certainly you know i did mention vr before i think mm-hmm. metaverses will come and and that'll the front the front door to that i think in most cases will be the website yeah um as you've mentioned web3 kind of technologies how do you how long do you think we are away from like mass adoption oh. depends how you define it <laughs> um firstly depends what you what people sort of bucket into web3 and yeah. what they see mass adoption being um obviously we've seen a massive bubble burst uh, probably start to mid of last year, yeah. uh, particularly with NFTs, yeah. and that's very has lots of similarities to what happened to dot, dot com bubble, yeah. right? And amazing businesses came out of that, yeah. and we're going to see the same thing. Yeah. Um, we're still miles away from where the UX needs to be, um, as far as Web three goes to, you know, make people comfortable. If you compare it to putting your credit card details into a website. Yeah. If you remember, you know, I'm old enough to remember, maybe not myself, but my parents being concerned about that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, there, there's similarities there, right? So I think that once the UX gets better, once we actually get regulation that we can rely on, yeah. because at the moment there, the regulation is extremely gray. Yeah. 
Um, you'll see even overseas, the SEC going after businesses with not really much explanation as to why. And it sort of contradicts to other lawsuits that they're filing. And there's just like people are sort of like, well, tell us what the rules are and we'll play by them. Yeah. Um, so I think once we get, you know, if not global consensus, at least within the area that we're operating, some sort of yeah. uh, North Star from a regulation perspective and, yeah. sub and much more consistency from a, you know, in terms of user friendliness and user experience, then we'll start to see the needle move. Yeah, so um, we see WordPress and Web3 touch together in like payment gateways. Um, but how do you, um, like with cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. as an example, but it, how do you, do you see it becoming closer WordPress and Web3 in, in other ways? I think, I think it goes back to what I mentioned before in terms of the website sort of being the front door to, you know, and, and connecting with a token that allows you to then gain access. And companies are already doing this. Um, yeah. Don't know if they're on WordPress, but yeah. their website acts as a front door. Um, one that people may may know is particularly in the marketing world. They'll definitely know who Gary V is. Yeah. He has a brand called V Friends. Yeah. They have that exact function where you can log in. Um, you utilize the tokens in your wallet to prove that you have ownership over those. Right. And then from there, you can um, build a profile on the back end. Yeah. You can um, enter into particular activations that they have. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of, you know, how I think we'll continue to see websites in general, but certainly WordPress be able to get closer to, to Web3. So another element is that in, you know, marketing and technology is AI. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you see AI um, moving uh, or pushing forward uh, websites? Again, it goes to regulations, like what are the rules? Yeah. Um, once we're clear on that, I think it's a no brainer that a lot of content creators will be content creators slash prompt writers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they're uh, they'll excel at the prompt. Yeah, absolutely. But they still there still needs that human interaction because we need to tell the machine what we like. We can still deliver and execute something on based on our tastes. Yeah. Utilizing AI. It's not like yes, it's doing a lot of the heavy lifting, but we can still drive that ship and it's you know, speaking of ships or cars, we can look at it as a horse and cart changing to a car. You know, mm. we're still going somewhere where with with a machine we're just doing it differently and more efficiently right yeah how do you see ai work like in the content development working with like brand voice do you have you seen like a good tool for that what i can see happening over time and maybe it's already been done is giving it enough context and i say it the machine that you're using or the tool that you're using giving it enough context and giving it the parameters and then helping it learn Absolutely, it's going to be able to do that. I'd be surprised if it's not being done currently. I think um, going back to the whole copyright piece, if we can sort of use it to help brainstorm ideas yeah. and then we go away and execute on that brand, yeah. um, I'd be shocked if people aren't doing that already. Yeah. So how do you, how do you think search engine, engines will play a role in identifying um, content from like chat GPT to like real content? The ability to generate content, how you know, and, and obviously ha however you, you end up doing that, and then putting that on the blockchain first, yeah. so that there's provenance and there's um, you can prove how it was generated and when, and it was by you, yeah. um, and then you know whoever creates that product that allows you to stamp that first and then distribute or you know officially create that content and i know it, you know tools like adobe are already bringing in a lot of sort of web3 related functionality with design yeah um but i think the you know with the create with the development of ai around deep fakes and all of these other copyright related issues being able to put that content on a ledger and be able to have like a quick verification that it's actually what it claims to be yeah is is a perfect use case for blockchain Awesome. Do you see like Google uh, experimenting with that type of thing in the future? I think that people are going to want, and there's already so much misinformation just in general, not only on the internet. I mean, look at the mainstream media. That's for another day. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, but certainly, you know, in terms of um, authenticity and, yeah. and proving that it is what it is, I think people are going to absolutely demand that. Yeah. 
So going back to our Salesforce discussion earlier, yep. you talked about um, that you're looking at it as a, as a stack, right? So um, CRM and then website. Can mm -hmm. you kind of go a little bit, give me a little bit more detail about yeah. how they work together? Salesforce is very vast in terms of the products, whether they've built them or acquired them along, along the way. Um, there's a lot you can do with it. But when, website, when it comes to websites, um, there are many ways that a website integrates with, with particularly the Salesforce stack, right? So if we're just looking at um, CRM, we can very easily integrate order data going straight into the CRM. So you can see if you're using WooCommerce, yeah. um, all of those transactions can go uh, into the into the CRM, and you can surface those to create reports or you know drive uh, data driven decisions, yeah. for example. And then if you add on sort of their marketing cloud stack, depending again if you're B two B or B two C, um, there are different options there around nurturing um, inquiries that come through, um, being able to converse with customers on social channels. Cool. Um, being able to sort of see behavior on the website. So whether it's, and I'm not going to get into the products, but from a use case perspective, whether it's just, you know, people going to particular URLs, if you want your sales team to know that that's happened, yeah. you can create that. Yeah. Or something that's a bit more complex or robust, I guess, is something called personalization, where it'll actually track the behavior on the website of a known individual and then it can um, create affinities and suggest next best actions for the salespeople on the CRM, yeah. but also can trigger marketing communications yeah. based on what they've done. So for instance, you know, I was on a golf site yesterday. Yeah. I don't know if they're using personalization. It looks like it. They could be using something else. I looked at this golf bag probably three times. Yeah. I've gotten two text messages because I was looking at that bag. I wasn't even at the cart, so it wasn't an abandoned cart. Yeah. I was just looking at the product. So yeah. that's an example of how the, the two can sort of come together. Yeah. There are many more, but it's definitely, you know, hand in hand. Yeah. Have you um, have you been working on a WordPress project recently that is like is 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 one that you'd want to talk about? Like it's it's interesting and, and um, like a solid user experience? Probably one of our, you know, Longest going relationships is with Chibani. Yeah. Um, so they 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 are on WordPress. Yeah. Um, I don't know how where they're hosting their site. I should know that. Uh, but they are on they are on WordPress. Yeah. Um, and essentially, we've worked with them over many years now to sort of continue to build out their their site and sort yeah. of help them be self sufficient, but also sort of work with them as new recipes or new products come out, yeah. working hand in hand to, to help them go to market with things. And, yeah. um, you know, that, that site's done absolutely everything that they've needed it to do over yeah. time. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. So um, I'd love to understand, uh, you seem very passionate about your work and um, your clients. Mm -hmm. Do you, what gets you up in the morning and gets you excited about like, you know, getting in there and making something wonderful that um, serves its purpose for your uh, end users? Great question. It's not always like that. <laughs> in a small business, it's certainly sometimes it is hard to get out of bed and, you know, I'm sure everyone that has a small business can definitely relate to that. Yeah. No, but look, for the, for the most part, it's, it's, it's definitely a joy. And um, I mean, what we've always tried to do, and I think we've done it quite well over, over time, is mm -hmm. just try and always put the problem and the, and the customer in the middle and sort of forget about, you know, the bells and whistles or what's in it for us and just try and drive value and build build our customer base over time like we're not doing it from a philip philanthropic standpoint we're yeah. certainly doing it from a commercial standpoint but we've always built out built our business over how can we build as many long-term customers as possible and continue to build on that and 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 do that over time and it's always been by always having the mindset of how can we drive as much value first mm -hmm. and instead of being transactional and sort of just keep keep continue to churn right and, yeah. and as a result of that our, our retainer customers continue to almost grow yeah. um from a revenue perspective every year yeah. and it's it's not by accident right like because we're doing that and some might say and we've been told before we leave money on the table yeah. at the start but it's always been you know a, a continuous build so i think that's probably the you know it's it's been our that sort of center point and north star in the business for sure. Yeah, thanks Theo. Thanks Theo.
This is Alotha Ties Talks and I'm Lauren Cox. Today we had with us Theo Kananopoulos, CEO of Out in the Clouds. Thanks Theo. Thank you so much. Thank you.